Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we get to do one of our favorite things, talk to subscribers. And we'll find out who we're talking to right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it yeah so recently we got a chance to go to keto summit omaha and it was really cool we got to hang out with a lot of people we hung out with vendors like keto savage and chris and miriam from keto chow we got to meet and talk to some of the speakers like asner cindy dr boz dr boz dr barry mm -hmm. but the really cool thing was the fact that we got to go and it's really the main reason that we go to these conferences was to hang out with subscribers. Yeah, because you guys really are our family. Yes. And it's just neat to be able to actually see you in person. And that is what gets me on a plane in January on my way to Omaha where it's eight degrees. Yeah. And we we really do mean it when we say, you guys are our family. You guys are the inspiration behind this channel. We really do care about you guys. It's why when we go to these different conferences, we don't go in to actually watch the different seminars. We'd rather just watch them later. So if you go to a conference and you see us there, do not feel bad about coming up and talking to us. We That's want, the reason we're there. We want to see you. Yes. Yes. So while we were there, we got to, not just for a couple of minutes, we really, it was awesome. We got to hang out with two incredible people for the entire weekend. Heather and Phil, mm -hmm. and they were actually the the individuals that blessed us with KetoCon tickets last year. Yeah. They were just incredible. It was, it was nice to be able to say thank you because they really got us started, you know, heading in this direction, right? Where we, yep. we decided to take it to the next level and like really like dig in with this channel. So it was nice to thank them in person, but then once we started hanging out, Man, it was just instant friendship, right? Like yeah. we had been friends our whole lives. Yeah. So we got a chance to get them on camera and tell their story and we wanted to share it with you right now. So I finally got to meet in person the coolest family ever. <laughs> it's Heather and Phil. Hey. Oh my gosh, so exciting. And they pointed out to me that I didn't realize that I had selected the grape flavor of this kombucha and it's very grapey. Dime tap all the way. <laughs> so we were so excited to get to meet Heather and Phil because you have an incredible story. What made you start on keto to start with? I was 300 pounds. I had severe rheumatoid arthritis. I, my doctor told me I'll be dead in five years if I don't do something. I was depressed. I was sad. I didn't care if I would die in five years. And someone told me about keto. We kind of played with it. My inflammation went down. I'm now on only one arthritis medication. I've wow. lost 111, 112 pounds back and forth. Um, I'm off all my antidepressants, all my anti-anxiety medicine. Um, I'm up walking around doing things, peopling. Yes, peopling. Peopling. And, and, and talking people from Florida to come to Omaha in January. So. Which I'm so <laughs> glad that you did because we're enjoying actual weather because in Florida, I don't know if you know this or not, but we only have two seasons, summer and diet summer. And now we actually have added a new season to our life. And in Iowa, we have two seasons. It's winter and road construction. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. So did you go on it first and then Phil or vice versa? We both just kind of started doing it. I just kind of like, do you want to try it? And he's like, eh, it was meat. He don't care. It's and he meat. started playing yeah. around with it and just kind of stuck with it because we started seeing results. Yeah. And it was easy. It's, I mean, we, in the beginning, we literally, we stuck to hamburger, steak, eggs, bacon, cheese. You know, and now we, you know, we play around with more food, but to be in the beginning, 
It was just, we stuck to the basics. Just yeah. keep your fats high, your proteins, and we hardly did any carbs because I just, I needed to get rid of the carbs because that's what was causing all my inflammation. So with me, the keto was more, I mean, yes, I needed to lose a lot of weight, but I really needed my health back, and that yeah. was most of it. And so the weight loss, it started slow, but the inflammation, when that started going away, I mean, I have a life now. And that is awesome. We do a lot of stuff. We love road tripping, go to concerts. and Motorcycle. Yep, we take the motorcycle out. Well, and what about you? How much weight have you lost since you started? I have lost 65 pounds since I started. I was on, I don't even remember okay. how many medications for different PTSD and different things. And uh, The VA was sending literally bags of medications every month for him. I don't think that we talk enough about the impact it has on your mind and anxiety and panic and all, all of those things because I've had that same and certainly Carrie's talked about that and, and what impact that the keto diet has had but for, to be able to eat actual food and then to have those I mean to like to have a life yep. like you're saying to be able to get out because there was a time in my life I couldn't leave the house yep. it's yep. very it's frustrating yep. And, and, and in today's society, everything is like, take a pill for it, take the side effects. Here, take a pill for those side effects. We'll take a pill for the side effects of the pill that prevents the side effects. I mean, and that's what I was on. It was like a roller coaster of medications, and him too. And the VA, I mean, God bless the VA, but they just throw medications at everything. And I mean, half the stuff he had, we didn't even know what it was or what it was for. I mean, yeah. they were just like, here, take this. Oh, and, and, and I he's think, off all of it. He doesn't take anything anymore. Which that is incredible. And I think that as more doctors become aware of it, they will stop prescribing so much stuff. Yeah. Because it's just it's the only way they know to handle it, yeah. I think. And I'm very blessed because my rheumatologist, I've been with him pretty much the whole time since I've had, probably at least 20 years I've been with him. And he knows me and I know him. And he knows if he prescribes something, if there's a side effect I don't like, I won't take it. Yeah. And now he, he asks me how I'm feeling. I mean, he really wants to know what is working, what isn't working. And if I say, I want to wean off of this, he's like, okay, let's do it. So he's very supportive and um, he likes me too. And so he asks us, like, okay, what are, what are you doing? And, you know, when your doctor's asking you, what are you doing? Yes. So I can tell my other patients, because I mean, he's he said that I'm the healthiest sick person. Because even at 300 pounds, even in my severe RA, my blood pressure was always normal. I thank God never had type 2 diabetes. Um, every all my blood work was fine, but my rheumatoid factor was literally almost 100 times what it it should be. Mm -hmm. And he. He was just at a loss. He didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. He was also my grandma's rheumatologist. So, I mean, what would you say to people who maybe want to have a conversation with their doctor, but sometimes we put doctors on a pedestal like they're a king and they yeah. just kind of tell us what we're doing and we're afraid to ask follow up questions? Well, my thing is, I was lucky because I kind of built a relationship with him. And if, if I go to a doctor and I don't, feel comfortable with that doctor, I probably wouldn't go back, but I'll, you know, if, if I went to a doctor now, I would flat out say, okay, I'm keto, this is what I do, don't try to tell me anything different, and if they don't like it, I'll find a new doctor, because I need someone that supports my health and my the way I, I want to do it. I yeah. mean, some people, you know, I've had tons of people, friends, family, Oh, you eat all that bacon, you're going to die. I'm like, did you not see me two years ago? Right. That is when I was dying. Right. This is me living. I yeah. Mean, I, so, you go to the doctor. I mean, you need to build a relationship. Tell them what your goals are. Tell them, you know, if, if medication doesn't make, if it makes it you feel worse than yeah. what it's supposed to treat, tell them you want, you need something different. I mean, you need to be your own advocate. And sometimes it's hard. That is so but, good. But, and, and because you do, I mean, you're raised that you do what the doctor tells you to do. Well, doctors are human. They're not always right. That's right. And so you question if something, if you have that little flat question, 
you have to. Yeah. Because otherwise you're just, you're not going to get better. Phil, have you ever gotten like any pushback? Do ever, does anybody ever say like, well, that's weird what you're eating or ever? No, I, I really haven't, not myself. I guess it it's kind of seems more acceptable maybe for males to do it than females. It, it kind of seems like to me there's a different stereotype. But I, think I mean, minutes. even at work and, and uh, when I was in the military, I mean, no one well, really questioned anything that, about it. That's actually really a good point because even when we would see, um, you know, like frozen meals, you would have things for a guy and they had more meat and bigger portions and all this kind of stuff and like they expect women (laughs) right the lean cuisine and it's supposed to have nothing in it and we're supposed to be satisfied with a rice cake which i am not but um yeah so that's good so you're getting the eye rolling from people, but but maybe for guys they're just like, oh, that's just like No, most steak. of his friends are like, man, I wish I could eat meat every day. My wife won't let me do that. Oh, because <laughs> they're worried about like cholesterol or yeah. things like yeah. that. Man. Yeah. So um, you are such a big part of the keto community. You're always so encouraging. You're in different live streams and stuff. What, why is that important to you to be in there to support like people who are kind of onboarding this? I want... Because I was so on the edge. I mean, it really seriously, I was suicidal. I was so depressed. We were seriously on the verge of divorce because we were both just so depressed. So we didn't know what else to do. And I want, if just one person is just like, I can maybe try that. That's all, it's just one baby step. Even if it's just throwing the white, throwing the bread out. Yeah. Throwing your big bag of sugar out and say, okay, I'm not going to do that. Or switch, even from a regular pop to a diet pop. I mean, just make a little change. Just take that baby step. But, I mean, I I don't baby step. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, like, I'm all in. We cleaned out everything. The kids come home, they're like, where's all the food? So... Well, I'm glad that we have this opportunity to just say thank you in person because you blessed us with tickets to KetoCon. And I think that that was the baby step that we were able to take to like get more invested in the channel. And I know that we would not be doing what we do except for you did that. And like I said, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, you're putting people's lives and I can I to do your first wife. I, me too. Fam- your family. I love that. Oh my goodness. And I <laughs> suppose we'll keep Joe too. Okay, yeah. So before we dive into what they talked about in this interview, I do want to say thank you to Heather and Phil right here for allowing us to film that because we really didn't give them much of a choice. We kind of shoved the camera in their face and said, you guys have to go on camera and tell your story. Right, because the more we talk to them, I don't think they realize what a wealth of information they are. Right. Um, In particular, Phil talking about how the keto diet has impacted PTSD. Yes. I mean, oh my goodness, we really don't think about that. Like, is there any you know, changes that could be made other than prescribing a bunch of medicine to help with PTSD. And he has had such an amazing transformation since going on the keto diet. Like certainly he's like us, he went on it for weight loss, Mm -hmm. but the health benefits have been incredible. And I know that the keto diet has been incredible for um, depression and anxiety, social anxiety for me, but I never thought about PTSD for this and he has gotten off of a lot of medication. Then you add in that whole aspect of going food shopping and the difference between a man and a woman. Like when we went to Sam's Club while we were in Omaha, nobody said a word about the fact that I was walking up to a cash register with 18 steaks, eight hamburgers, a big block of cheese. Mm -hmm. Nobody said a word about that to me. But if I am without you, and don't have you to justify my cart, I better just have lettuce and rice cakes in there. Otherwise, mm mm-hmm, you're eating too much, lady. Yeah, so it was just awesome to get to hang out with them. And I just, once again, wanna say thank you to them for, number one, blessing us last year with the KetoCon tickets because it really did propel you know our attitudes and propel this channel if it wasn't for them i don't know if we would have been putting as much time as we have into it for the last year but the friendship that we've gained from them and from all of the other subscribers that we have met 
I, it's just, I can't even describe it. And we want to say thank you to not only them, but to all of you. And if you are at a conference in the next year that we're in, please come and talk to us. We would love to not only get a hug, yes, but get to share your story. Yeah, because we are we are going to be emceeing at Keto Salt Lake in Utah, which is in April this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to definitely be at KetoCon in June and we're still considering driving to KetoCon and we are probably going to be getting in there like on Wednesday even though it doesn't start till Friday we're probably going to be in there on Wednesday so if you're in that area or if you're coming in early maybe we can do some kind of get together depending on what kind of participation you guys are willing to have with us I would love that and then we're going to be at at least one more conference before the end of the year depending on which ones come out now there is an entire list on lowcarbevents.com of yes. all of the different conferences super helpful and if there's not one on there that you know of make sure you email them so they can get it on that list. Yeah. And let us know down in the comments section if you're planning on going to one of those conferences and if we see a lot of people from our channel going to one, we'll try to get that one onto our itinerary of where we're gonna go. Ooh, I like that idea. So that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.